Hello, fifth graders. Mr. Weiner here. Today we are going to discuss and go over some of the concepts talked about in Unit 3. Important thing, one important thing that you need to know is that every triangle has, is made up of 180 degrees. When you add up these three angles, so angle 1, angle 2, and angle 3, so if we label those, if this was A, B, and C. So if we added up the measure of angle B, A, C, which is this angle right here, angle A, or A, B, C, which is angle B, or B, C, A, which is angle, uh, angle C, we'd find that that totals up together to equal uh, 180 degrees. Now, the way we write this, and this is a review for some, this might be new for others, when we talk about this angle right here, we refer to it by this, uh, by this combination, angle B, A, C, with the middle letter representing what angle we're talking about. So the measure of angle B, A, C, so we're really talking about the measure of angle A, equals 90 degrees. Okay. Now suppose that I knew that this was 30 degrees, and that was 60 degrees, I could write below that the measure of angle A, B, C is 30 degrees. It looks like I forgot my degree sign above. And then for the measure of angle A, C, B, the measure of angle A, C, B is 60 degrees. Now when I add these all up together, that equals 180 degrees. Now, if you were to have a quadrangle, a four-sided shape, that would be 360 degrees. And you would do the same thing. You could add up all of these different angles and find that those are 360 degrees together. Now let's talk about some of the different types of angles. The first type of angle that we can discuss is an acute angle, which is anywhere from zero to 89 degrees. At 90 degrees we have a right angle. Now you'll see that a right angle is indicated by this little square in the corner. This shows that this angle is 90 degrees. Next up we have an obtuse angle which is larger larger than 90 degrees so it's 91 to 179 degrees. At 180 degrees we have a straight angle. It's one. It's a straight angle right there. It, it never stops. It goes from one end straight to the other. Now, 300, uh, larger than 180 degrees is called a reflex volley. Uh, reflex volley. And that's my tennis side coming out of me. It's a reflex angle, which is actually larger. So we're actually measuring this part right here. And that's anywhere from 181 to 359. Okay. A full angle here would be all the way around from one side to the other, and that would be 360 degrees. So that's just kind of a tutorial on the different types of angles. So this right, let's go through it again one more time. This right here is acute. This is a right. We have an obtuse, straight. We have a reflex. And then I call this a full. That might not be the technical name, but it's 360 degrees around. Now, additionally, we have some different kind of triangles. We have an equilateral triangle, which has three 60-degree angles and three equal sides. I represent and show that the sides are the same uh, length by these one by the lines that go through. If I were to have two lines that were to go through this side, that would show that this one, this side, was longer or not the same length as those two. So that's an equilateral. We have an isosceles, which is two side lengths that are the same. So I have two lines that go through there. And then two on this one, showing that this line is, is different. Lastly, we have uh, two angles that are the same and one angle that is different. This is an isosceles triangle. Lastly, we have the scalene triangle, which has three different lengths, side lengths, and three different angles. 
So you can see that's represented by all the different lengths, this one being one dash, this is two, and that's three, meaning that they're all different lengths. Um, and all the angles are different as well. And this is a scaling triangle. Next we're going to talk about uh, how we can discover and decipher um, the, the area, or excuse me, the degrees of different angles. Now if I have a straight line, the straight line, and I'm just going to, I'll actually erase this here. A straight line always indicates 180 degrees. So when we have a straight line like this from here to here, that is 180 degrees. Now using this information, I can transfer that to this problem. So if I know that this right here is 70 degrees, I always ask myself, what is this mystery angle here? Well, I know that 70 degrees plus a mystery amount equals 180 degrees because this right here is the total and this is the part we already know. So I'm asking myself, what is this mystery part, the part that I do not know? Well, I can either think about in my mind, 70 plus what is, is 180, or I could have 180 minus 70 to find the missing component of 110. As I always say in class, everyone can do algebra, and this is actually just the beginning steps of algebra. So in this case, this mystery angle is 110 degrees. Now when we have two parallel lines that continue in a straight path, so they'll never run into each other, and I have a line that cuts through the middle of them, we can talk about corresponding angles. Corresponding and opposite angles, actually. When we know that this angle right here is 60 degrees, I actually know the angles of every other angle on the rest of this picture here. Um, I know the angle of here, 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 and here. All other seven based on one simple truth, one simple fact. When I have an opposite angle, that means that it's on the opposite side of the diagram. 60 degrees is on the opposite side, so we have 60 and 60. Now when we have two parallel lines, like these right here, that continue on in, in uh, motion for the for the life of its span, this could go on, on and on, it could go through China, it could go through Europe, it would keep going and it would never run into the line above. Now below the corresponding angles, because these two are parallel, we know that these two are both 60 degrees as well. When there are two parallel lines, the degrees are the same on the top and on the bottom. I could take this part right here and cut it and paste it right on top and it would be exactly the same. Now before we talked about knowing that a straight line equals 180 degrees from this point to this point. Now I can see right here that this is a straight line. So I know that this angle right here has to be 60 plus something to give me 180 degrees. Okay. So I could either do this in my mind or algebraically and I could say 180 minus 60 which is 120 degrees. And I could fill that in for the corresponding angles. Now just like before, because I know one angle, I can figure out the rest. The reason why I'm writing 120 in on every single one isn't just because I'm guessing, but because I see the same truth, 60 and 120 equal 180. 60 and 120 equal 180. And I follow all these straight lines, and it doesn't really matter where you start. It just matters that you follow the policies and procedures set out by the material we've learned in unit and unit three. Now, if you're in Mr. Wainer's class, you know that this is for an assignment, that you were supposed to listen to this video for your homework tonight. Now, what I'd like for you to do is I'd like for you to email me at kwainer at kcsa.org, and I would like for you to tell me one thing that you are thankful for. And we're actually going to use this for a Bible unit, uh, for our Bible unit coming up. And this is just a good way for you to think about and evaluate what in your life is going well. What are you thankful for? And it's a way for me to check to make sure that you've watched the entire video. Thanks for watching and have a good rest of your day.